Do you or somebody you know, or maybe a whole family that you know, have too many flannels? There's no such thing, and if anyone ever tells you that, you need to cut them out of your life because you do not need that negativity. Flannels are life. Hello, good people of the world. I hope you are having an amazing day. My name is Kristana, so welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Welcome back, friends and family. I wanna say, when I say friends and family, I mean those of you who show up for every video, you comment, you like, you give me love, support, even if you're honest and you don't like something. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the honesty. If there is one thing I've learned, if there is one thing that has taken over my life in the last almost 15 years that I have been married to a Mainer, maniac, it's flannel. Although I can say I've always loved flannel, but it runs deep in our family. So again, if you don't like flannel or you love flannel and you have someone that tells you that flannel is not cool, you need to reassess that friendship because I'm telling you, it's awesome. And it's great for when it's cold. Anyways, so I get questions sometimes about where I get my inspiration from. And today my inspiration came directly from the shirt that I am wearing, the flannel that I am wearing. There are different kinds of plaid. I'm not gonna get super into it, but there's tartan plaid, buffalo plaid, yada, yada, yada. A lot of it dates back in history, but now we wear it because it's awesome. It's awesome and I love it, okay? so. What I did is I practiced a little bit on this board. It, this hopefully is not what it's gonna look like. I distressed it a little too much, but I was playing around because I wanted to see how I could create this. Now, I will tell you, and I am going to get these comments from people that this is tedious, it's too much work for me. I gotta say that I never go into it thinking that in any project. I feel like if there's something worth doing and you love it, it's worth doing 110%. I have always just gone above and beyond. Could I just paint one color finish and be done? Yes, absolutely. Could you? Yes, absolutely. But that's just not my personality. So do I expect you guys to do every single thing that I do? No. But do I teach you so that if you decide to get out of your comfort zone or maybe go the extra step? Yes, so that you can do it. So with that being said, I bought this bad boy off of Facebook Marketplace. It was not super expensive. There are a few things that we're gonna have to fix, but it's got a really nice flat front to it, so it's going to be easy to tape off and paint plaid. And because it doesn't have super, any kind of crazy character to it, it's gonna be even better because we're gonna let the plaid speak for itself, hopefully. I mean, this could be a real disaster. This could just come out super awful and maybe some of you will think it's awful and I'll think it's awesome. That's the thing. Rainbows are created because there's a bunch of different colors and that is why the world is beautiful because everyone's different and everyone likes different stuff, right? Okay, so also, let me tell you this. If someone says that it is too early for you to be creating DIY stuff for the holidays, that is negative and you need to get them out of your life. I'm just kidding. So. I want you to know that even if you do not wanna do this, this version on a dresser, you can do it on home decor, you can do it on anything, charger plates for something maybe for your holiday dinners, whatever. I mean, come on, plaid is essential for the holidays. Fall to winter to summer to all year long. That's what I like plaid for. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. We are going to try to recreate my shirt on this dresser. Don't forget, everything I use is in the description below and make sure you guys are hitting the comment, the like button, commenting, tell me what you think and be nice. Be nice about it or else. We're cutting a bunch of people out of our lives today. People who don't like flannel, people who don't like holiday decor early, and people who are mean. So be nice. All right guys, let's get started. 
Before I did anything, I wanted to fix this loose veneer on here. There are a few drawers that have it, so I'm gonna show you how to fix it. I have this little bottle that has a syringe on the end, or you can just use a syringe, and this is wood glue in here, and I am putting the syringe down into the area that is loose, and I'm putting a ton of wood glue in there. You can never have too much wood glue. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to take a thin piece of plywood, and I am going to put that over top of the veneer that's loose, and then I'm gonna clamp it. So someone's gonna ask, why don't you just clamp the veneer directly? This plywood actually allows me to apply even pressure along the entire thing so that there is pressure going on all of the loose veneer versus just on the areas where there's clamps. All right, let's see ooh, ooh, if it worked. Just like that. Shablam! Fix this drawer. See, look. Now I have to fix this little lip right here. And I'm gonna go around the entire dresser and see if I have any other loose veneer. And we are going to do the same exact thing that I did on this drawer. After I fixed all of the loose veneer, I removed the remaining hardware. This is my least favorite hardware. I call it Batman hardware. I just really don't like it. And I save everything, but what you can do with this is put it right in the trash because I will never use this hardware again. <laughs> I'm sorry if you like it, I just cannot stand it. Once I trashed the only hardware I will ever trash, I'm gonna clean this with Dixie Bell's White Lightning, which is a TSP-based cleaner. I'm gonna go over the entire thing, clean it, and then go over it with water to get any residual off. And then it is ready for us to paint. I do pull out the drawers and I clean the inside and out of the piece. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put a two coats of palmetto, which is a deeper kind of forest green, on this entire piece first. The sort of plaid that we are going to be painting is called tartan plaid. It is a variation of that. Now you can do any color you want, but I am trying to paint my shirt, literally what it looks like. So green is the color scheme for that. And so palmetto is going to be our base color. I am going to do the very best that I can to walk you through this process without confusing you. So the color that you paint first will be your base color for whatever kind of plaid you want to do. For this kind of plaid, you want to, let's just say you start from the left side of whatever you're painting, okay? You take the left edge and you do four inches, a four inch line from there, then from that four inch line, mark a two inch line, then do four inches, then two inches, and repeat that. This is going to be our vertical stripes. So remember, four inches, two inches, four inches, two inches. And then what I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna take a construction T-square or a drywall T-square is what they call it. These are super helpful. I use it all the time. You can get one for about $30 and they are super helpful for bigger pieces. So here's one on Amazon, about $32, you can adjust it. And so instead of just having 90 degree angles, you can adjust those to 45 degrees or whatever. But what I'm doing is I'm lining this up with those marks that I made and I am making lines with a pencil so that I can see where my lines are when I start taping off. So what we're doing here is I am hitting the mark where the four inch line is and I'm going to make a mark. Then I'm gonna go over to the two inch line that I made and I'm going to make a line. Then I'm gonna to go to the four inch line, make a line, so on so forth. Once I have marked all of my lines, I'm going to take painter's tape and I'm going to tape on the left and the right side of that two inch line because that's what we're gonna paint first. So 
or otherwise on the outside. So we're focusing on painting that two inch line that we made. And so that's why we're taping off the left side and the right side of that or the outsides of that stripe or those stripes. So we're gonna tape that all off Once I have all of my tape down, I'm gonna use a little trick. It is taking clear coat and just going over the edges and that way you don't have any paint bleed under your tape. You can do this if you want. I have done it throughout this entire process to keep the lines crisp. Although I am going for a faded plaid look, I don't want it perfect, but this will help so that it's not super messy. Once the clear coat dries, I am going to paint within those two inch lines with evergreen, which is a little bit brighter than palmetto. And what I'm doing is I'm going to just do a dry brush technique. Again, remember I'm going for a faded plaid look, so I don't want this to be completely perfect, but if you want this to be solid and really crisp looking, then you would do a more crisp paint job instead of doing more of a dry brush. So I'm gonna pull all the tape off. You don't have to wait for the paint to dry to pull the tape, but you do have to wait for the paint to dry to move to the next portion of this. Maybe something that you need to go back and pause and read but I did put this in place for you but I'm gonna walk you through it so we need to do our horizontal lines so I'm measuring there's two inches and then I'm going up to the next one and that one is three and a half inches and then two inches and three and a half inches you can see that this is my shirt <laughs> So I'm mimicking this. What you're gonna do is start from the bottom of whatever you're painting and you're gonna mark the two inch, then the three and a half inch, then the two inch. The same way that we did the other lines. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna take that drywall tee and we are going to make lines with our pencil as well. And then we'll tape it off. Just like the vertical ones, when we focused on the two inch stripe, that's what we're gonna do with our horizontal ones. So once you have all of your stripes drawn with your pencil, you are going to tape off the top and the bottom of the two inch stripes. So that way we can only paint inside of that two inch one that we have drawn. So tape the top and the bottom, and then you're going to use your clear coat to make sure that there's no bleed under if you want to. And then we're going to paint within those two inch stripe lines. At this point, you're probably seeing tape everywhere, but this is what I do. I remember to only paint the inside of the two inch stripes by drawing an arrow pointing to the two inch one. So that way, when I go back to paint, I'm like, okay, that's where I need to paint. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take collard greens, which is a deeper green, and I am just going to do a dry brush within the two inch stripe on the wider areas where that palmetto is, because we wanna make that darker. So don't go over the evergreen within those two inch stripes, just go over the palmetto so that you can make that a little bit darker. If you get any paint on the evergreen, just take a little bit of a damp rag and then just wipe it away. It's not a big deal. At any point in time, if you have any kind of bleed over, you can just wipe it away with a rag. So now we're gonna focus on the black lines that are in this flannel. These black stripes are three quarter inch in width and there's two of them. 
And so now what we're going to focus on is painting that black part. And what we're going to do is we are going to wait for the paint to completely dry on the piece and we're going to reposition the tape that we've already used. And so we're going to take the tape off and we are going to put it over top of what we just did, lining it up with the top of that. So right there, I'm going to line it up because that black stripe is going to go right above there. So you want to put the tape right on top of the edge of the area that you just painted with the colored greens. And that way, when we mark off for the black lines, they'll be, they'll be right next to it. They'll be butted up against that area that we just did with the colored greens, but you won't get any bleed under because you've put that tape on there. I hope that makes sense. So what we're doing is we're taping off all of the areas that we just did with the darker paint. Once I reposition all of my paint, I'm gonna take my clear coat and I'm just going to seal those edges so that way when we do the black, it's not gonna have any bleed under. When your clear coat is dry, you are going to take your ruler and you're gonna mark three quarter inch from each one of those pieces of tape. Cause remember there's two things of black. So we're gonna mark a three quarter inch from the bottom, from all of the tape. So right there, we're gonna mark a three quarter inch. You saw me do it on the other one. We're gonna do it from this one and that one and that one because we're gonna have black on all of them. And then we're going to draw it out with our pencil, with our drywall tee, and that way we know where we need to do another line of tape so that way we can do the black lines that are in this flannel. For this part, I pulled out the two inch painter's tape and that way I only had to use one piece of tape for each thing. So I'm just making sure that that two inch painter tape is staying in between those pencil marks that I made. And this will make it so much easier. So then you're not having to do two pieces of tape on each. So the two inch painter's tape is what I am doing in between. So that way on either side of that, I'm gonna be able to do my black. If you look at the flannel, the black has a little bit of a dry brush look on it and a solid look. So what I'm gonna do is dry brush on all of the evergreen lines and that way I can have two different looks. So I'm just dry brushing, I'm dabbing the extra paint off on the painter's tape and I'm just gonna do a dry brush on all of those evergreen lines first. Once I'm done with the dry brush, I'm going to take a different paintbrush that I know I can have control over, and I am going to paint on either side of the dry brushing with solid black. This color that I'm using is actually Midnight Sky, so it's a deep, deep, deep gray, but you can also use a black if you want. My favorite part of this whole process is pulling the tape off. So right now we're gonna pull all of the tape off to see if we are headed in the right direction. I'm gonna tell you guys this right now, I have never painted tartan plaid. I've done buffalo plaid, but I have never done this before. So you guys are on this journey with me. Okay, so the next color we're gonna to move to is the blue line. All right, so you see where that blue is and there's almost like an aqua looking color. So what we need to do is we need to tape off all of the black lines. We are not gonna paint the darker green. We are gonna be painting this line. So make sure you are taping off these black lines so that way we can focus on that one right there. So I'm gonna tape everything off so that we can focus on the line that we have not painted yet. Once you have taped all of those off, it is time to box in those evergreen. So we're going to tape the sides of the evergreen squares because what we're going to do is we're going to make those into the aqua color. So we need to tape off all of the evergreen squares or the brighter green, whatever color you decide to use. And that way we can do almost kind of like a wash on those to get that teal looking color. So. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to tape and box off all of those ones. Once I have all my tape off, I am going to make a little bit of a wash. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Bunker Hill Blue, which is like a 
brighter navy and then I'm going to add water and this is going to create a wash that we are going to put in each one of those squares. And so we're still going to have that evergreen underneath, but we're going to add a little bit of a blue wash so that it's giving us more of a kind of aqua brighter blue color that is in that flannel. And I'm going to put this on all of those things that we have boxed off. Once you're done, you want to wait for it to slightly dry before you start pulling the tape that we used to box it off, but keep the other long tape on there. So you're going to pull all of those little tapes that we used to box it off, but make sure you don't mess with that tape that's going horizontal because we still need that. Before we move to the next step, you need to make sure that all those areas that we just did the blue are completely dry. Now what we're going to do is take our two inch tape and we are going to go over vertically all of that, that stripe right there where you see all the blue and the evergreen, you need to cover that. So that way we can do the deeper blue on either side of where we just did that little blue wash. Once you've taped off, we are going to paint the solid blue. Only stay in the stripes where you did the blue wash. So make sure you do not paint over the areas where there is the collared greens. And then you're gonna pull it all off and my favorite part, and we're gonna expose the blue and the green and the black and the amazing plaid. There's one last thing we need to paint on here and it's the red stripes. I'm not gonna do the blue and yellow, we're just gonna do the red. So what I need to do is find the center of each one of those blues. And so it is two inches from either side of the blue, the bigger blue mark. So we're going to mark two inches on each one of those so that I can put tape going down that part. So I'm gonna put the tape over top of that. I am going to take a pencil mark and make sure I make a mark down where all of those areas are that I just marked. So that way I can put my tape going over top of the pencil marks. This tape is really thin, super thin. It's probably a quarter of an inch. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting it over top of all of the pencil marks. And then if you noticed, there are two lines. So I am just kind of moving it over to the left and the right a little bit. I didn't measure this part. I'm just eyeballing it and hoping for the best. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over top of that with barn red to make my red stripes. And then I'm going to pull the tape away and hopefully it works. And I'm going to repeat this process going the opposite direction so that I have red lines going vertically and horizontally. You're going to find the center of the blue and you're going to mark it off going the other way and then you're going to pull it off. So here it is in all its glory. I know it was a lot of work guys but it is so worth it. I love plaid. So now what I'm going to do is give it a more faded look by taking a 10 millimeter super fine rad pad and I am going to distress it and give it more of a faded look. I don't think this piece would be complete without some black wax to really deepen these colors. So I am going to apply black wax on the entire piece and wipe it back. And so now it is protected and it is a little bit deeper in color. And I just love this piece. I hope you guys love it too. So here we are. Here is the dresser. I hope you guys like that video. I know it seems like a lot of work, but it is so worth it. And I wanted to address one of the things that I did with it. So I had it, let's back up, twinning, twinning. I'm so proud of myself. So I laid it on its back and I would suggest that you lay the pieces on its back if you can, because it makes it easier to tape it off and easier for you to stand over it and measure things and do all the things. So that's what I would say if you can, and you're going to do this finish on furniture or you could do it on home decor, you could really do it on anything. 
Make sure that you have it at an angle where it's easier for you to kind of stand over it and tape and all that stuff. If you saw in the video, I actually got on top of the dresser in order to tape it off sometimes. With that being said, everything I use is in the description below. I'd say you probably need at least one roll of each tape, depending on the piece. This is a four drawer dresser, it's, it's fairly big. You'll probably need, well, you'll need one roll of two inch tape. You can get a roll of like the quarter inch tape. I think that's how big it is. I'll put it in the description. And then you're gonna need at least one roll of the one inch tape maybe two. You can reuse them like how we did when we took the one off and replaced it. Make sure that you guys are subscribed. Let me know how you feel about this piece. It's festive. It's like rain. And I'm twinning with my dresser. Have an awesome day, guys. I will see you next video and happy creating. Bye! Hey, darling. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get